Hello, in this presentation, we'll be looking at trusses and how we can analyze trusses in ANSYS, specifically ANSYS APDL. Now, this is not ANSYS Mechanical, or sorry, ANSYS, well, ANSYS Mechanical, ANSYS Workbench, uh, which we'll get to later, but ANSYS APDL. It's kind of the old format, old GUI of ANSYS, but allows us to do um, one dimensional members much more easily. Um, so we're going to look at that today, actually two dimensional members. Um, and uh, that'll be what we use to analyze our truss. All right, one thing I want to cover first is that uh, there's a link, uh, the member, the kind of member we're going to use, uh, and it used to be link one. And this changed about five years ago. This is it's 2016 when I'm recording this. Uh, so anyways, link 180 is what we're going to use. So if you're looking at uh, old books, you'll see, hey, we should be using link one for a 2D member. Well, it was replaced by link 180 about uh, around 2010. So that's what we're going to be using. And I'll show you that very soon after we start the program. All right, so this is the example we're going to be working on, this trust. So this would be example number one. Uh, in the second video, I'll show you how to do example, um, actually not number one, it should be number two. Uh, so I'll update that before the second video. All right, so this is the one we're going to be doing. So first thing you need to do is you're going to need a license for this. You need a license for ANSYS. Um, you can just open uh, ANSYS APDL. All right, so that's what we're looking for. And go ahead and hit enter on that. And I'll expand this to fit my whole window here. All right, so you can see the overall format here of the APDL. we got our main window, which we're going to do our drawings in. Uh, we got this menu on the left-hand side. We're going to do a lot of work with this menu. And basically what I'm going to try to show you here is what we're going to do is be just going from the top and working down through this, working through these different menus, applying boundary conditions, elements, constants, and then solving it post-processing. So we use this menu here on the left-hand side to do all that. On the right-hand side, we have different ways that we can manipulate our, uh, our plot. And so hopefully you have that showing. And then we'll use some of these menus here at the top. All right, so first thing we want to do after we've opened it is we want to name our file. And you wouldn't have to do this, but it's, it's good practice. So we're going to, we're going to do um, to change the job name, or excuse me, change the, change the title. And we'll just change it to trust. And we'll click OK there. All right, so first thing we do is come down here. Uh, let's start out with preferences. This will kind of make things a lot cleaner for what we're doing. So I'm just click on preferences. And what you see here is the different types of analysis we could do, structural, thermal, ANSYS fluid, magnetic, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, clearly, we're going to be doing structural here as we look at our trust. So just click the uh, check on that. What you're going to find is this will reduce the menus down to only the items that apply to structural analysis. So you won't have to look at any thermal stuff, any fluid stuff, and so that will help the process. So go ahead and click OK on that. So now we'll go down the preprocessor, expand the menu. And the first thing we're going to do is define our element type. So this is that link uh, 180 I mentioned. So go ahead and you can either click the plus or click right on the name. And we're going to add an element type. And we'll get more into this later What you know when you pick which element versus another. But for now, we'll just go ahead and add. We have none defined, so we're going to add a definition. And here's our structural mass. We have a link. So we're looking at just two force members because we're looking at truss members. So we're going to click on link, and there's our 180. So link 180 is what we're looking for. We're not going to do 11. So everything looks good there. And we'll go ahead and click on OK. And so it pops up here. We're going to have a type 1 element. So 1 is the indicator of what kind of element we're using, is link 180. So go ahead and hit close on that. So we're good there. All right, now we're going to move on to real constants, the next menu down. So click on real constants and add it a delete. And we'll add that. And so we're going to apply this constant to this particular element. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And so this is the different real constants we could have for each element. And so this one we're just going to say is 1. And the area we're going to define as is 8. All right, so going back to the presentation real quick, what is 8? Why are we calling that 8? Well, if you look at the slideshow here, um, actually, it doesn't show it really right, right here. But 8 inches is the cross-sectional area. So this would obviously have to be given, or you'd have to know this as you're designing your, your truss system. Uh, but 8 inches, keyword there, inches is the cross-sectional area. All right. So what we notice as we go back, let me get it shown up there, and then utility menu. All right. There is no dimension showing here. Right. We didn't set the dimensions. Of the front. So ANSYS is very open to any dimensional system. 
But you need to remember that because as we go through and pick other things, we need to make sure our dimensions are consistent throughout our, our applying these values into the menus. All right, so eight is what we have here. So eight inches, go ahead and click OK. And so we'll close that. Looks good. All right, so now we go to the next thing down. We're going to do material properties. And we'll go into the material models. All right, and we're obviously doing structural. So we'll go over here, structural. And we'll look at linear, elastic, and isotropic. So iso, constant. All right. So here our modulus is going to be for a material is 1.9 e to the sixth. All right. And the Poisson ratio is 0.3. And go ahead and click OK on that. So it shows up over here as our new model. We just clicked on it, it should pop back up. So cancel that out. So that's what we got there. It looks good. And we can come up here and click exit, or you can come over here and click the um, the close button. Either one's fine. All right, doing well there. Save DB. And so this is a big thing you want to do as you do any type of modeling, especially anything you're doing on a computer. You want to save often. Uh, things can crash, um, interruptions in the computer, electricity, whatever. Uh, make sure you're saving so you don't have to go back and do some work. Uh, so by the way, I just I, I put in the modulus. I've put in the eight inches cross section. To, uh, just to be clear here, what we're solving here is a balcony truss. Let me go back here. This is a balcony truss made out of Douglas fir wood. So that's what we're the values we're using and what it's all set up for. So a balcony truss um, using Douglas fir wood. All right, so let's go back here. All right, so we saved DB. So now let's set up our graphics window for what we want to do. So we're coming here to work plane. And this is a work plane settings. So we'll click on that. And we are doing a Cartesian analysis. We want to show both the grid and the triad. So the grid's not showing right now. Here, this is the triad. We're going to first the triad. So that's the X, Y, and Z. We're going to build up the grid here. Give the settings for it. So we're going to enable snap every 12 inches. Because right? again, we set up that uh, cross-section area is 8 inches. So this better be in inches too. Uh, we're going to have spacing for our grid every 12 inches. Uh, now zero for our minimum here. Our maximum will be, I just hit tab there by the way, tab will be 72 inches. All right, so going back here, let's see why we're doing that. All right, so we got three times three is six, or sorry, three plus three is six, six times 12, and that's our 72. All right, so we're trying to get, we want to be able to have um, points where we can click right here on each one of these, for these nodes locations. So that's the 72. And then we don't have to worry about tolerance. Go ahead and click OK. So let's get back to our ANSYS window. All right, so now let's display our working plane. We've defined the grid. Let's actually display it. Oh, where'd it go? All right, so this is where you want to zoom out. We're really, really zoomed in. That's what we see. This is basically one big square. So we want to zoom out. So find your, your zoom out button over here. And click on this several times to get to the point where you're seeing all the squares. And then we're just going to shift it over. So pan left and pan down. And let's hit plus on that to get it bigger. There we go. So if you have one more, yeah, we're beyond the window. So let's go minus right there so we can see everything. That looks good. All right. So now let's put some nodes in this thing. So we go preprocessor, -pro -pre come down here, modeling, or model what we're doing. And we want to create nodes on working plane. That's what we just defined. We created the working plane. So we'll click there. And now what it wants is, this is the, called the picker window, and we want to pick where we want. So we're going to uh, start here at 0, 0. All right. And then we'll move over to 3 feet, 1, 2, 3. Pick this node. So let's go back to presentation again. So we're right here. All right. And by the way, if you print off the handout, which I'll, again, I'll have in the same location as we have for the past couple lectures, uh, basically look at the link in the in the notes, uh, which will get you to that. Um, that will show you where the where the nodes are at, and you can follow along probably a little better for me bouncing back and forth. All right, so we got three inches there. Uh, we'll do the one up here at three. Sorry, not three inches, three feet. 36 inches, uh, 36 inches up here for this node, and then we'll go across for node four, 
and then node 5 out here. And we'll click OK. Oh, by the way, if you miss one, uh, so maybe I, maybe I put one here by accident, we'll just come back here, unpick, and see how the arrow flipped directions. Right, so let me just show you again. So pick is up, unpick is down. So we'll unpick this one, All right, and then we can go back to what we're doing. All right, so go ahead and click OK. And you can see they're numbered. You can hardly see the one in there because it's kind of messed up, but two, three, four, and five. And it does matter the order that you pick them for the node numbers to show up uh, in, the same, in the same way. All right, so to highlight these nodes here, the, the grid is really there just to help us find where, it was, where to pick the nodes at. So we're going to display working plane and uncheck that. And now maybe we can shift pan it up here and maybe can we zoom in and stuff? Yeah, there we go. So let's zoom in so we can see everything a little bit better. All right, so to maintain the numbering, let's go up here to plot controls and numbering. So numbering right here. And let's see here, we want, uh, let's keep our node numbers, make sure they stay on, so we'll check that. Uh, element attribute number, let's do that as well so we can see the element numbers. Um, see those, and that uh, looks good. So click apply, and okay. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five. We haven't put any elements in yet, so those aren't showing up. All right, to make sure we got everything that looks good, we can come over here to list. Um, no, we only have five, so it's not a big deal, um, but in some other cases that we're going to be looking at in the future, it's going to matter um, where those show up. So we'll just go coordinates only and go ahead and OK, and list the nodes saying we're at uh, node 1 is at 0, 0, node 2 is at 36 inches, y equals 0, et cetera, et cetera. All right, notice there's no uh, units shown in here, so we have to, again, be consistent with units uh, as we go through our model. All right, so we'll again, save db. All right, so let's uh, define some elements here. So we got our nodes, so we're going to define the elements. So we click on elements there. And we're going to do auto numbered through our nodes. Right? Nodes we just created, so click through nodes. Uh, picker window comes up again. And again, order matters for what the element numbers are going to be. So we'll, do, we'll start with um, node 1, which you can't really see there, and then node 2. And there's a lot of ways we can do this next step here. We want to basically apply and say, yep, that's going to be element one. So the first thing I'll do is I'll say, let's come over here and just click apply. And it pops up there with a the number. Uh, let's define the next one. So we'll go from two up to three. And another way, instead of hitting apply, you can middle click. So just middle click, and that works as well. All right, so then let's go from three to four is the next one. I'll middle click now. And let's go from two up to four. Your computer kind of lagged there for a bit. And let's go from two to five. Middle click, and then we'll do from four to five. And middle click. All right, that looks good. And we'll go ahead and click OK. All right, so again, save DB. Again, let's do it uh, more than we need to, just to make sure we catch everything we want. All right, so we have uh, nodes defined, we got elements defined. Uh, what's next? We need to define boundary conditions, all right? Loads and or boundary conditions. So there's two places we can do that. One is here under loads, and the other one is under solution. We have defined loads. So we'll go here under solution, and we'll apply structural loads and do displacement on uh, nodes, which are in here. Right. So we're just going to basically constrain this so you can see apply some displacement or rotation on nodes. And in this case, we want to fix some things. We want to make sure some things don't move. And so we'll pick node 1, and we'll pick node 3. And we can middle click, or we can click apply. I'll middle click here. And we're going to say all degrees of freedom. We don't want either of those points. Those, those are affixed to a wall. They're not moving in any direction. So we'll say all degrees of freedom are a constant value, and that constant value is zero. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And so you get these nice little arrows pointing that there's constraints on both of those. Uh, let's go back here, and we'll do uh, apply structural, not displacement now, but force slash moment, and we'll apply on nodes. All right, 
and just double checking here, going back to our picture here, we got 500 pounds uh, being applied down the vertical direction, 500 pounds here as well. All right, so let's apply to node four and node five. And again, middle click. And the direction of the force is going to be in the y direction. So we look down here at triad. Okay, so we got y direction. And this is indicating that y is positive going upwards. So we want to go in a negative 500 pounds. And click OK. And we see the red arrows indicating, now it's not being applied this way, but pulling down that node is effectively the same thing. So save DB. All right, and that's enough. We got our boundary conditions, we got our loads, we got our nodes, we got our elements, everything's been applied. So we can go over here and under solution, click on solve and current LS. Go ahead and click there and we'll say okay. And it should happen very, very quickly. Solution's done. We'll click close and just go ahead and close this window. By the way, if there's some error and something comes up and, and things are running like you don't expect, like you're expecting them to, go to the other window. There's ANSYS opens two windows, and this other window, if you find it here, is the output window, and usually it gives a very good description about what's going on, about what happened. So again, nothing's had a problem here, but here's all the explanation of the solving here. Um, and so then if there's an error, just come in here and look for the last lines to understand what happened, and I'll give you a tip to what you need to fix. All right, so we got uh, all of our information. Now we need to go figure out, uh, find the stuff that we solve for. So let's uh, just do a nice little um, view of the results. So we'll go to plot results, plot the deformed shape. And let's both see both the deformed shape as well as the undeformed shape. So we can kind of compare. Go ahead and click OK. And so we got this white uh, dash line which is the original position of our truss. And you can see the deflection that happened after the loads were deployed, applied. So that's a, a nice view there. Now we want to get the other actual data from the result. What are those displacements actually, what are those the values of those displacements? So I come over here instead of applying results, we'll list results. And we'll go into the list nodal solutions or uh, nodal solution here. And we want to look at the degrees of freedom. And we'll look at the displacement vector sum. So this will give you all the components. You know, you can pick individual components up here. And we'll look at all the components, components here and click OK. It gives you this nice little summary. So you can see that node 1, get this out of the way here. You can see, move this up a bit. You can see that node 1 shows that node 1 did not move in the X or the Y, which is good because we constrained that. That was the boundary condition. Uh, node 2 deflected a negative 0.35 times 10 to the negative 2 what? All right, there's no units given here, so we have to remember what are our units. We're in inches. All right, so node 2 right here deflected uh, negative 0.35 times 10 to the minus 2 in an uh, x direction, or negative x direction in this case, and also negative 0 0.1025. 2 times 10 to the uh, negative 1 in the y direction. All right, and you can see what happens for 4 and 5 as well. So that's how we can see the actual values for um, movement. All right, so that's nice, but now we also want to get some values beyond this. So let's get some stress values. All right, so to do that, let's look at their elements because that's where our elements show up. So we've got the general post proc, and we'll go to the element table. So down here, the element table, and we'll define table. Right, so we need to define. We haven't defined it yet. So we'll add, and we'll come in here, and we'll type in. Again, this is just the name for it. So we're going to say the uh, force, uh, axial force, uh, for our label, and we do it by sequence number. And so basically, what this is, is just within ANSYS, this is how it's defined. So everything you're seeing right now is really just a GUI, a graphical user interface for stuff that you could program into a text file and run in, and ANSYS would solve your model. So when you see S-M-I-C, M-I-S-C, it's, it's the command you would call to actually look at the stresses. So in our case, it's S-M-I-S-C, and then we'll put a one here to indicate we're looking at those actual stresses, and we'll go ahead and say apply. All right. And then we'll come back in here, or say actual forces, 
those are the actual forces. Now we'll come in here and look at the actual stresses. And again, we'll go by sequence number. And instead of S minutes, we'll do like an LS and 1. So again, this is just how ANSYS defines stress and um, finding stress in the actual force. So we got those two defined. So we'll go ahead and close. And now we'll go back and we'll say element table, plot element table. And we can plot uh, axial force. And see what we get there. So we actually see the forces that are in our members. And maybe we want to zoom out now. All right. So you can do that with either one. But we also come back in our list element table. We actually want to see the values. And we can just click on axial force, click on axial stress, and then click OK. And it'll give us a table for each element. I want one, two, three, four, five, and six. And it'll give us the actual force. Again, no units. All right. So we got to remember what the forces we were using. So these are all in pounds. And then over here we have our actual stresses. So these are in um, PSI. All right, so things look good there. All right, so go ahead and close that. And let's look at our reaction forces. So we'll look at our list results, general post proc, and we'll list results. And we come down here to reaction solutions. And we'll say, go ahead with all items. And we can see the reaction forces are at basically the two nodes that were fixed, node one and node three. And we have 150 pounds, or sorry, 1,500 pounds in the x direction and negative 1,500 pounds in the x direction. So at node one, all right, we can see it's the reaction force is pushing this way, all right, which makes sense because it's, it's going downward here. So it's going to be pushing in the wall. So the reaction is a push back. And at three, it's pulling away from the wall, so three's reaction is to pull back. So it's a negative 1,500 pounds. All right, so that's how we solve it. If you um, have any questions, you put them in the comments. Try to answer those. Otherwise, as you finish up, again, make sure you save DB. And so that actually means saving to a particular file. Let's save our overall analysis. Come up here and uh, save as. Make sure we know it's, it has been saving it to some random file, so make sure you can save it to where you want. So um, I'll save it under mine. Basic things, and we're going to call this Trust DB. It looks like I'd already saved it before, which is fine. OK, and go ahead and replace that. All right, so hopefully uh, that gives you a nice overview of ANSYS. Again, I'll do the second example in the next uh, video, and you can check out another way you can work on solving that. All right.